Morris, the ultra fast dryer that's going to use vacuum to reduce the amount of energy it takes to evaporate water. Because just like in outer space, the water inside Morris evaporates at a lower temperature, thus requiring less heat and energy to vaporize. <laughs> which I'm going to bust it. First of all, wrote a reply to me. And then they actually made a response video and they included in it a link to a private video of the device working, which was great because I was really curious to see what this device actually sounded like. You know, because for some strange reason, I'm sure it's just total coincidence, all the other videos that they have uh, somehow managed to have no sound on. Huh, that's odd. What's wrong with the sound on this video? No, this is the unedited video. I mean, surely they can't be trying to conceal the fact that their device sounds like a hairdryer. Yeah, but we'll come back to that later. Now, let's just remind ourselves of the key promises of this device, that it's going to run under vacuum, and not just regular vacuum, space vacuum. Vacuum technology. No, not that vacuum, space vacuum. And it's gonna use infrared light. Combined with its infrared heating system, it can dry your clothes in as little as 15 minutes. Or as it says in the Kickstarter, it's going to use UV and uh, IF, technology, whatever that is. So here you are, get your clothes dry within 15 minutes using UV and IF technology. And it's on all of them, UV and IF technology, UV and IF technology, UV and IF technology. <laughs> and it's going to be ventless, which means that it's going to actually condense the water and not just vent it into the room. And you know, the more I think about this, the more it kind of stinks of someone selling a hair dryer and a rotating drum for a few hundred bucks. But let's go through their written reply first, then we'll come back to their video response. Uh, the first thing that just stinks is the first line. The concept of vacuum drying is not a scam. Well, yes. But the concept of getting a self-filling water bottle isn't a scam either. Because dehumidifiers work and are used in industry. I wonder how that worked out for them. Oh yeah, that's right, they went bust. And look, they too had a nice video showing how their kit worked. So it can't be a scam because dehumidifiers actually work, right? Yeah, the vacuum dryers do exist, but there's a good reason why this sort of thing isn't used to dry clothes. I mean, you can get your first flavor why this sort of thing isn't used to dry clothes if you just type vacuum dryer into Google and look for images. And the one thing you'll notice is these vacuum dryers look pretty heavy duty. So this beastie here is my vacuum oven, or as it says, a vacuum dryer. And the one thing you'll notice is these things are built like an absolute tank. And just look at the thickness of the door on these things. As is the, the, the rest of it. It's... And the reason it's built like a tank, of course, is these things have to be able to hold a vacuum, which is actually an awful lot of force. It's about 10 tons per square meter when you're under a full vacuum. Now, down here, I've got a... Uh, rotary pump. It's actually a fairly decent rotary pump. Uh, go down to a uh, fraction of a, a millibar. Um, but pumping out a big chamber like this is a tough job. So if I spark up my pump, leave uh, the arms closed, and there you go. Not 
check there. Good, I'm closing the bleeder valve. So, uh, to get to millibar, 20 millibar, vapor pressure water, that's all the way over on this side. The highest mountains in America, they would be up about here somewhere. That's, I don't know, 15, 14,000 feet, that sort of thing. Mount Everest, like um, atmospheric pressure on Mount Everest is over here somewhere. So as you can see, it takes quite a time to pump these things down. And what you'll see is, as you get further over, it gets slower and slower and slower. And that's because with a rotary pump like this, it's got a, a sort of fixed sized piston essentially. So it can only pull out uh, a fraction of the water with each cycle of the pump, let's say 1%. So obviously here it's taking out 1% of the whole atmosphere. Here it's only taking out 1% of what's left. So it gets slower and slower and slower. And you wouldn't be able to use a decent sized rotary pump like this on the Morris for two reasons. First of all, it's an oil-based pump. So what happens if you use this with something like water is eventually you get water in the oil and it ceases to be an effective pump. So we're now up to about the atmospheric pressure that you would get on Mount Everest. Now, it turns out they claim they're going to actually have a lousy vacuum in this dryer, about a tenth of an atmosphere, which means they won't have a force of 10 tons per square meter on the outside, but about 9 tons per square meter. Which is why vacuum ovens like this are built like tanks and not flimsy little plastic boxes. The vacuum vessel that they're probably looking at is it's probably about half the size of this thing in total. So you can see that it's getting pretty small. Indeed, they actually have some numbers for the size of their drum, which is about 29 centimeters by 26 centimeters, give or take one foot by one foot. Now, it turns out I've actually got a vacuum desiccator about that size. Good. So what we've got here is a vacuum desiccator with a vacuum gauge on the top. This one's polycarbonate. Uh, polycarbonate's good and bad for vacuum desiccators. It's good in that when it fails, it doesn't throw big chunks of glass around. There's actually quite a lot of energy in a, a vacuum, des big vacuum desiccator like this. Um, the downside, of course, is if you're drying something which has solvents in, the solvents can get into the plastic and rot the plastic. And this thing is, this thing's pretty flimsy anyway. It'll, it'll hold a vacuum, but I wouldn't trust it with taking much more in the way of mechanical stress after that. Anyway, in terms of dimensions, uh, what you'll find is this guy is fairly comparable. He's about 25 centimeters across and 25-ish centimeters tall, which means that the barrel on that thing is not far off the size of this Morris dryer thing. Which means that this is just a single shirt going in to what is essentially the barrel size of this dryer. It's a single shirt. Now it's a vacuum desiccator. Uh, now I could hump, hook this up to a chunky pump, a uh, rotary pump, but like we're saying, rotary pumps you can't really use because they have oil in them and that's just going to fill up with water after a while and it'll stop being an effective pump. Diaphragm pump, you get a little diaphragm pump like this for about 10 bucks. They don't pull great vacuum, but they're cheap. Um, I was saying, 10-ish bucks. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that we're sealed up on the top. The, the vacuum pump is actually going into the back here, so we're going to make sure the back's open. And he is, and we're going to push this down to make sure we start up with the vacuum. Good. I should, once they're, they're sealed, the vacuum will hold them sharp. Uh, just to give us some idea of how long that's going to take. Um, We're going to get a stopwatch going here. As you can see, we're up to about a tenth of an atmosphere down already. So it does work. It's just clearly going to take a lot more than 15 minutes to 
get down to the required value. Actually, now we're up to about a tenth of a tenth of an atmosphere. Given enough time, <laughs> given about half an hour, I reckon, that will get this this boy down here to about a tenth of an atmosphere, which is all the way over the other side. Because remember, what happens is um, you pump. You've got to pump more more air. Well, more of the the gas on the inside of here to actually get the pressure down a little more that's the, the the exponential thing on the pumping but this isn't the only thing they've got to have under vacuum they actually have to have a casing all around this that needs to be under vacuum too because feed throughs on vacuum chambers with moving parts are a colossal pain in the ass because not only do you need the low friction that you get from a bearing it also needs to be an airtight seal and that's actually a pretty technically challenging thing to do so pretty much the only sensible way to do this is to have as a big metal box with this tumble dryer thing on the inside. But I'll come back to that later. The practical upshot is basically almost the entire of this structure has to have has to be able to survive a pressure of about 10 tons per square meter. Or zero uses vacuum technology. No, not that vacuum, space vacuum. And uh, I'm not so sure I believe that. So what else about this product just feels wrong? Well, if you look at all of their video footage, the one thing you'll notice is there's almost no indication of what this device sounds like. You can look at their video from the CES where they launched it and you'll notice it's got a music track, no sound. If you take a look at their video that they released of it working, Again, a music track, no sound. In fact, the only thing that they've got suggests that it makes almost no sound at all. You can barely hear it above the narration. Safely doing laundry in the comfort of your own home. And then you take a look at their technical diagrams and the teardown that they have of this thing. And you'll notice that it contains nothing to condense water. Nothing that would pass as a vacuum container. And hell, for that matter, nothing that would pass as a vacuum pump. And bear in mind that ventless dryers like this are basically giant heat exchangers. You need something like this in there. Okay, so here's a dryer. And that is what the heat exchanger looks like. It's a big block of metal with lots of radiator fins on it. Where is it? Basically, nine tenths of the items that you would need to make the claimed product are missing here. Then you take a look back at their rebuttal letter. Morris Zero does not maintain a nearly complete vacuum, a tenth of an atmosphere, through the drying process. It can only use heat conduction and heat radiation to heat clothes under full vacuum. These may help dry flower medicines well, but are not efficient for insulating materials such as clothes. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the ambiguity, I mean, this whole thing has the feel of someone who just read the wiki article on vacuum drying, but has no real experience of dealing with vacuums or evaporation or condensation of liquids under vacuum. Look, if I get atmospheric pressure, that's a thousand millibars, and add some water, a few drops of water to it, the water constitutes about 20 millibars, and you've got a thousand millibars of atmospheric pressure. So about 2% of the atmosphere there is water vapor. Now, if I remove 90% of the air and add some water to that, as I explained in my last video, the vapor pressure does not depend on the atmospheric pressure because from the perspective of the surface of the water, it's essentially a total vacuum whether there's an atmosphere there or not. The practical upshot is the vapor pressure of water is going to be 20 millibars and then you're going to have 100 millibars of air on top of it. Four fifths of the atmosphere in this dryer is still going to be air, which you can pump around and use for heat exchange. And read it again. Morris Zero does not maintain a nearly complete vacuum. It's not a nearly complete vacuum through the drying process. This just makes no sense. Normally what you would do in a system like this is you pump down the system, you pump out all of the air and then you seal the system. 
and then you run the whole drying process under reduced pressure without ever having to run the vacuum pump again like i did here with my little tube once it's pumped out and there's a perfect vacuum on the inside i don't have to pump anymore and if I condense water on one side, then water goes from one side to the other at the speed of sound. But of course, you're still going to put all the energy in to, the, to evaporate the water. The thermodynamics doesn't change, which is why the water freezes in about 20 seconds. But in principle, you could just keep pumping on the vacuum chamber. But bear in mind that a cubic meter of air contains about 20 grams of of water. Now they reckon the Morris is going to pull off 200 grams in a go. Okay, cool. So 200 grams would be about 10 cubic meters of vacuum with saturated water pressure on it. And a decent rotary pump like this pulls about four cubic feet per minute. Four cubic feet is about a tenth of a cubic meter. So to run this for one minute, we'll get to about a tenth of a cubic meter. To run it for 10 minutes, we'll get you about one cubic meter. And to run it for 100 minutes, we'll get you about 10 cubic meters. You have to run a pump like this for about two hours just to suck all the water out using a vacuum pump. And even at that, you would just be pumping that water vapor into the room, meaning that it wouldn't be a ventless dryer. So the only way that it would be sensible to do this is vac down your dryer, seal it, run the whole thing under reduced pressure, then it is a ventless dryer. And the only way air can get into the system is if you open a valve. But as I went over in the original busted video, none of that changes the thermodynamics. You still have to put the energy in to evaporate the water. So in most of the drying process, we use a large flow pump to maintain a relatively low pressure while still having a hot air flow, which is why Morris Zero contains a lint trap. What, you're gonna use hot air now? I thought it was going to use infrared light to, um, uh, to do the heating. Combined with its infrared heating system, it can dry your clothes in as little as 15 minutes. What, you mean having a relatively large air flow of hot air to heat the clothes? You mean like in a regular tumble dryer? Hey, look at the teardown. No apparent vacuum pumps, no apparent vacuum vessel. Hell, it was only when I got down to thinking about this that it suddenly came to me that what the hell's the deal with that water trap? How are you going to get the water out of a vacuum chamber without actually having a hole in the vacuum chamber? And yeah, a little hole in the vacuum chamber and your vacuum's gone. I mean, that's it. I mean, let, let me just show you with my vacuum oven if I just open the bleeder valve a bit. So if I kill the pump, what you'll see is it's a sealed system now. So unless there's a leak, it should be good basically in perpetuity like this. And what I want to show you is if I open the bleeder valve, uh, just to give you an idea of how even a small hole on a fairly big vacuum system basically absolutely prevents you from holding a decent vacuum. So if I just open the bleeder valve. Right, this is one small hole for a vacuum system this size. And I am still a pump again and see what effect that actually has. You know, what sort of vacuum can I pull with a decent pump with a vacuum system with a hole in it? And the answer is not a very good one. Okay, now, 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 okay, there we go. Now the vacuum is on, and that's the best vacuum that I can pull with the bleeder valve open and the pump going full whack. I'll show you that is the case. If I close the bleeder valve and start to pull a vacuum, even a small hole absolutely kills your ability to pull a vacuum. And let's just briefly remind ourselves of how long it took a fairly decent pump to pull down a vacuum vessel this size, not to a tenth of an atmosphere, which is the pressure that they claim Morris runs under, but to a third of an atmosphere, which is more like the pressure that you get on Mount Everest. And this is maybe an interesting time to reflect on why I have this giant vacuum chamber in the first place. 
You may remember some time ago, NASA wanted to send this helicopter to Mars. And initially, I was super skeptical about it until I went through the calculations and finally concluded that actually, no, this was possible. <laughs> very difficult, very likely to fail, but it was possible. And I got this vacuum oven to do the vacuum thrust tests with a, a small helicopter and various degrees of vacuum. Sadly, it arrived too late. But it's at times like this that I'd really like to thank those who support this channel through Patreon, as they really do make buying pieces of kit like this possible. And now, it's being used to benchmark this uh, vacuum dryer. So there we are, about one minute in, and we're down to the sort of atmospheric pressure that you get on the big mountains in America. Okay, so a pump. And the other thing you'll find is when these things have been under a fairly decent vacuum, uh, even a very small vacuum will hold the door shut. That's why fridge doors, when you close them, is the cold vacuum. That is a small reduction in the pressure that holds them shut. But also with these boys, um, the seals tend to stick a bit once they've been under vacuum. Um, so anyway, that's a, a even at that, you know, it, it's not a giant vacuum oven. You know, this is probably only comparable to a regular sized dryer. Maybe not even that. So if the water is actually going to be condensing on the inside of this low pressure chamber, how is it actually going to get in to the trap at the bottom? Now, I mean, the only way it can sensibly be done if the whole thing is under vacuum. But that would mean that you would need vacuum seals on the water bath as well. And you just remove it, dump the water. No seals whatsoever on the water trap. Nah, none of this makes any sense. So what have we got so far? A vacuum dryer that uses vacuum to help clothes dry faster. That uh, doesn't actually maintain vacuum for the uh, whole time, which uses infrared light. Sorry, did I say infrared light? Nope, it uses air from the surrounding environment. Oh, sorry, what's that you were saying? That it was ventless. <laughs> actually, no, you can't be ventless if you're sucking air in from the environment. As they explicitly say, the energy of evaporation is not only supplemented by the heating module, but from air from the surrounding environment that flows through also adds a lot of energy to the clothes. And it's going to use high flow pumps and heaters. Yeah, congratulations, you've invented a tumble dryer. Honestly, if I look at the teardown of this thing, let me just tell you what I see. I see a vented dryer that essentially consists of a hair dryer, you know, a high flow pump and a rotating drum. But hey, it can't be that. That would be hella noisy. Yeah, high flow pumps are notoriously noisy. And look, you can barely hear this uh, Morris over the voice of the narrator. Safely doing laundry in the comfort of your own home. Can you hear it? Safely doing laundry in the comfort of your own home. Uh, sorry, what's that? In the comment section, it says that it runs at about 60 dB. That's about the noise of a normal human conversation. So let's move a hairdryer sufficiently far away that it's about the same volume as a human conversation. Now you might be thinking that I'm crazy and that I've forgotten my lapel mic. No, uh, the reason I've done all this is so you get a reasonable idea of what all these things sound like. So for instance, this is a standard hair dryer. A few feet away. And look, it uses a thousand watts, almost exactly like Morris. So this is about what Morris would sound like at this sort of distance. But in their Morris promo video, it's working and you can barely hear it. The comfort of your own home. That doesn't seem very honest. Maybe we should uh, update their video. Safely doing laundry in the comfort of your own home. Thankfully, the Morris Zero uses vacuum technology. No, not that vacuum. Actually, no. I'm pretty sure it's exactly that kind of vacuum. You know, this kind of vacuum? What, you mean like this? So in most of the drying process, we use a large flow pump to maintain a relatively low pressure. 
Now, in response to my video, they did actually upload some uh, footage of their dryer working, where it pulls off about half a kilo of water per hour versus a regular dryer, which will do about three times that amount. But their sound is curiously muted on this video. Well, thankfully, they've got some talking and some other sound events on this audio track. So let's see if we can actually edit those so that they sound a little more realistic. One last time, let's hear it in their promo video. Safely doing laundry in the comfort of your own home. And for those who missed it, this is actually them loading up their dryer with three shirts, which are all black, so it makes it very difficult to see just how stuffed full this dryer is with merely three shirts. Yeah, they don't quite have what they have in their promo video, which is a few small little items about the sizes of handkerchiefs or tea towels. Well, I gotta be fair, at least in the reply video that they did, they acknowledged that they can't beat the laws of thermodynamics via some clever design, which is what Fontas claimed they would do. And they did actually find a mistake in my video. Hmm, significant? No, not really, but still a mistake. Right, so this was the mistake. All the numbers I had were for drying wet clothes, per kilo of wet clothes, not per kilo of water. And one is basically three times the size of the other. The practical upshot, when I do my independent calculations, they're a factor of three out. So that number there is wrong. These numbers here are right, which means that this Morris is actually more efficient than regular dryers, but less efficient than heat pump dryers. Is it dishonest to call that green and that it takes 40% less energy than other dryers? Uh, yeah, kinda. It's kind of like claiming that my gas guzzling pickup truck is eco-friendly because it has better gas mileage than a Humvee. So other than that, their main point is that they claim that they're gonna use reduced pressure to actually make the water evaporate quicker. And I'm not so sure I buy any of that. We create a low pressure environment using a large flow pump and the difference between the inlet and outlet. You see, this is the thing. A large flow pump is basically a hairdryer or a vacuum cleaner or something like that. And those things really struggle to get down to three quarters of an atmosphere. Our suction gauge measures inches of water lift. If a vacuum has a water lift of over 80, that is a powerful vacuum. So you got that, a super strong vacuum is 100 inches of water lift. And if you wanted to get a total vacuum, you would get about 400 inches of water lift. So your best high volume vacuum pumps are only gonna get down to about three quarters of an atmosphere. That's about the atmospheric pressure on reasonable sized mountains in America. It's a bit of a stretch to call that a vacuum. The Morris Zero uses vacuum technology. No, not that vacuum, space vacuum. And even harder to see how you're gonna get down to a tenth of an atmosphere with such a pump. And believe it or not, this thing has now raised over half a million dollars. God, makes you want to go and clean the lab. And for cleaning the lab, I use a Dyson animal. Because while these things are hella expensive, of all the snob value purchases I've made, eh, this one was kind of worth it. Because these things are very powerful and very well designed. So Amazon affiliate links below if you're into that sort of thing. And hit the like button if you liked what you saw. Subscribe and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss out on new uploads. And there's always the Voice of Thunder channel if you want to see more of what's new, like what's happening on the surface of the sun today. And as ever, 
If you really like this channel and want to support it directly, you can do it through Patreon. And uh, thanks for watching.